The average trader works one hour a day, but that's for the week. And I'm gonna prove that by day trading for eight hours straight, which is an entire trading session. So the market opens at 9.30 and the timer starts now. Well, th that was a bit anticlimactic, but let's just start trading. So there's one rule, and that's to treat today as a regular trading day. This means I'm not allowed to use my phone and I'm not allowed to leave this chair. And I'm not even kidding when I say this, but it took me one hour to find a good trade. But once I did, I entered that trade quicker than you could smash the like button. Now I'm a little disappointed that my first trade only gave me $5. It just shows that the challenge is gonna be really hard. You see, about a week ago, I lost $1,800 day trading. And today I was thinking that I was gonna make it back throughout these eight hours. But with this result, it's gonna be a lot harder than I thought. So that's why I'm also writing down and journaling my trades. That way I can keep track of my progress and actually learn from my mistakes or learn from my successes. And hopefully I don't lose the $1,800 again. So it's hour two and traders typically stop here because of the low volatility. Vol volati volatility. But also to prevent over trading because the more you trade, the more you start making bad trades. And the only way to avoid this is to remove emotions from your money, even though I'm really not ready to lose the $3,200 left on my account. So I'm going to start picking up the pace and make a lot more trades. Okay, maybe I should be picking on my trades again. You know, looking back at it, I spend my entire day on the computer. But there's something about this challenge that makes staring at my computer 10 times harder than it usually is. But anyway, I have money to make back, so let's continue trading. After reviewing my trades, it looks like there are two successful strategies. Number one, double-legged flags. And number two, when the price respects support and resistance levels. In other words, double-legged flags just means that the price went up a lot, then went back down a little bit, then went back up a lot again, and then the price dipped a little bit again. So then you'd place your buy order at the entry of this last level and the price should go up a lot again. As for the second strategy of support and resistance levels, these are just previous levels that the price hit and bounced off of. So if it's not broken, don't fix it. But we're not going to make money back at this pace if I don't start trading. So, um... And with this new breakthrough, I continued trading. Although I did have some losing trades, I had a lot more success following the strategy. And I was able to become overall profitable, in which my best trade followed the strategy perfectly. So the price went up a lot, then dipped, went back up, dipped again, and then the price went up a lot. And I covered my position where the volume spiked, just in case the trade reverses against me. And even though this strategy was working, the wins were short-lived. Now from this point forward, I'm going to be really careful with the trades I make and be really patient, as Gary Vee always says. You see, Gary Vee claims to have built his wealth with garage sales, and quite frankly, I think that's BS. So I want to show my entrepreneurial dominance by passing him in YouTube subscribers. And Gary, if I pass you in subscribers, I have to be in one of your trash talk episodes to prove you're legitimately making money. But anyway, back to our scheduled program. So it's 4pm and the stock market is officially closed, which means the challenge is also over. And after all these hours, I ended up making $5. Now, even though this is terrible, I learned a lot from this experience and took a lot of notes that I can learn from. And honestly, maybe we should see it as a good thing because at least I didn't lose any money. I just didn't make any either. But since the challenge is over, that only leaves me with one thing left to do. We're free now, but this is not financial advice.